guys, we're back. Another day, another daily live session with me. I'm Talia, founder of Workweek Lunch. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited to jump in tonight and talk about how to reduce weeds in the kitchen. If you've been following me for a while and I've had this account for over three years now, um, I did not care about any of this when I started meal prepping. None of this was on my radar until I built this incredible community who showed me tips and tricks along the way about how to reduce weeds. So just know that like, I started at literally zero. I did not, none of this was on my radar. You don't have to do all of this at once. Not all these tips may, will work for you depending on your lifestyle and what you, you know, how you cook and what you do in your day to day. Let's jump in. The first way to reduce waste in your kitchen is probably the least sexy way to do it. And I think you all can guess what it is. It's meal planning. Because if you actually eat what you buy, you won't be wasting it. I think that Americans waste something like 30 to 40% of the food they buy it goes right in the trash. It's probably because they're not planning to eat what they buy and that's just a huge pitfall. So if you plan ahead, you don't have you don't even have to meal prep. If you just make a plan for what you buy, your ingredients, if they if you know what you're going to do with them every week, you're doing way better than most Americans who are tossing all their food. The second way to reduce waste in your kitchen, which kind of goes but the meal planning is enjoying your food, which means you have to get good at cooking. If you're a good cook, you're gonna make food you enjoy eating and you're gonna eat it. If you're not a great cook and you make food you don't like, you're gonna to toss it out and end up wasting it. So that could be, you know, making sure you're cooking foods that you enjoy and not cooking foods that are quote unquote healthy. Like if you don't want the healthified version of cookies like sweet potato cookies or whatever BS that diet culture is putting out there, make real cookies. You know, make what you actually enjoy eating. Don't worry so much if it's healthy or not. If you're making it at home, chances are it's healthier than if you were buying it out anyway. Something you can do pretty much overnight is get rid of your paper towels and start using dish towels. I got these at the dollar store. Um, when we first moved in, we just washed them in the washing machine and I use these 80% of the time. Yes, I still use paper towels for some stuff, but I have about 10 of these guys. They sit in my drawer, I wash them every week and I don't end up using paper towels. So you can also use old t-shirts. Um, we're using we're using a bunch of other stuff. Anything that's cloth, like a rag you don't care about, can be used to wash and dry your surfaces, your dishes, and be basically replace your paper towels. Another way to reduce waste in your kitchen is reusing plastic bags. So obviously when I go grocery shopping, I don't use plastic bags. I have a grocery cart, I have the mesh bags for produce, but occasionally a plastic bag comes into my life and if I do that, I store it in this jar. There are like 30 plastic bags in this jar. It was really fun and kind of therapeutic to stuff them all down and like get them in there. So this is great. Um, I reuse all these bags as much as I can. Do I reuse every single bag? No, I have to throw out the ones that have chicken in it, you know, raw chicken or raw meat. So, but I really, really do my best to reuse as many plastic bags. We use these for recycling. And again, we take the recycling downstairs to the bin and we, empty the bag and then put the bag back in here unless it's like super dirty. So you can reuse plastic bags over and over. We do our best to reuse them for all kinds of stuff. So the fifth way to reduce waste is composting. Again, this is something pretty new to me. We've only been composting for about a year. And if you're unfamiliar with the process, it just means taking your food scraps and turning them into dirt so that they are basically returning to the earth. Um, not all food scraps work for compost. It's mostly veggies, coffee grounds, sometimes eggshells, sometimes meat. It depends on the process. Most home composting methods, you cannot compost meat. I can't in my composter. Uh, we only really compost the veggie scraps, coffee grounds, um, obviously, yeah, fruit scraps and stuff like, or, or grains, you know, and pasta. Like nothing like meat, dairy, eggshells, we can't do. Um, citrus peels, like orange peels, lemon peels, we can't do, but most of it we compost. There's two ways you can do this. Some cities have a compost system in place. New York City doesn't really, so I have to look up in my neighborhood, where can I drop off compost? So you can just do a quick Google search wherever you live, compost, the name of your town, see what comes up, see if you can take your scrap somewhere, I freeze mine, right? Because I don't want to have a pile of compost just sitting on my counter. There's roaches in New York City. Like, that's not ideal. So we, we freeze our compost. We take it once a week. Before the coronavirus lockdown, we used to go to the library and dump our compost there. They had bins that the city dealt with. Now with the lockdown, we're using a composter we bought on Amazon a year ago, which sits behind our car in our parking lot. So we are kind of making our own dirt that way. And it's, it's not as easy, but it works. The other thing you can do with veggie scraps, which we talked about in another video, is make 
veggie stock, but you still have to discard your scraps so they'll still end up in compost, but at least you can get a little bit more, you know, food out of them before you toss them. Freezing ingredients is another way you can easily reduce waste. I wish I started using my freezer long ago, but I really didn't start until I moved in with my partner who is a little bit more, I don't know, forward. <laughs> He's a little more like eco-friendly forward than me. So he encouraged me to use the freezer more and we freeze everything. Early on stories, I posted a list of stuff that you can freeze. I can't say we freeze everything on that list, but we freeze our meat, veggies, grains. Um, I freeze like bread, butter, milk. I've been freezing milk these days. We are using our freezer so much more and it really helps us reduce waste because instead of things going in the trash before they, when they spoil, we're able to save them and freeze them before they spoil. Another thing you can do to reduce waste is DIY. You can make your own pretty much anything. Some people make their own bread. Some people make their own veggie stock. I make my own snacks. So like this week, I made banana bread. And I don't ever really buy snacks. I make my own muffins, popcorn. I make my own hummus. If there's anything that you like and you buy a lot of that always comes in a package, like hummus always comes in a plastic thing, look up to see how you can make it. I'm sure it's pretty simple. Of course not everything is, but you can make your own tortillas. You can make, you can, there's so much you can do on your own that if you learn and get good at it, you'll never have to buy it again. Another thing we use a lot are Ziploc bags and also, you know, food containers. So to replace Ziploc bags, we've invested in Stasher bags. So Stasher bags are reusable silicone bags. I'm not working with them. I just like this brand a lot. Stasher is the name. And these have, I, I never buy Ziplocs because I have a bunch of these. Yes, they're expensive, but it pretty much pays off because you're not buying tons of boxes of Ziploc bags. I've had some of mine for three years and they're perfectly in good shape. So if you're serious about reducing waste and you go through a lot of Ziploc bags that you think you can reduce that, this is an easy fix. This product is amazing. I highly recommend it. And yes, it is really easy to clean. A sponge, some water will do. Also, invest in some glass meal prep containers because glass is definitely a little bit more environmentally friendly than plastic. Of course, you can reuse plastic containers and after they're not safe for food anymore, you can reuse them for other stuff. I took all of my old plastic containers and now they're storing stuff in my toiletry closet, like Q-tips and all that stuff. So I'm using the, I'm reusing plastic containers for stuff outside the kitchen. But if you want to, you know, to kind of revamp your containers and just get rid of your plastic ones, invest in some glass ones. They will last you a very long time as long as you don't break them. Another way to reduce waste is to reuse jars and like things that other food comes in. So this was a, this was a fresh direct container that I'm now using to store my popcorn kernels. And I also keep, um, I also keep old, you know, salsa jars and wash them out. <coughs> you know, I basically run them in the dishwasher like a bunch of times and let them soak with soap so they don't smell anymore. <coughs> but this can be used for something. I, you know, keep a lot of food jars to, re to store things in my pantry, um, store food and snacks and other ingredients, or just as like a, something to mix in. I can store salad dressings in here. So you can reuse this. The last thing I wanna talk about is making your own coffee. Who makes their own coffee here? Drop them in the comments. Uh, let me know how you make your own coffee, if you do it, if you wanna learn, cause we're gonna make cold brew right now. I buy whole beans. This is an old bag of uh, whole beans. I use this grinder to grind my coffee into coarse grounds because you need coarse grounds for cold brew. You cannot use regular ground coffee. They have to be a little bit bigger, the, the pieces. Um, this is our mason jar. It has a lid and it also has a filter. So basically we are going to pour the grounds in here with filtered water and that will just sit in the fridge for a week until we are done with it and start the process over. I just poured in the grounds, and now we're going to pour in some water. That's generally the, uh, the process of the cold brew. When we're done with our coffee, we actually empty the grounds into a bag. And as you can see, I'm reusing a flat bread bag, but there are grounds, we're gonna compost them. This goes in the freezer. What we do with the like little bit of coffee at the end, we save for coffee ice cubes. 
And that's, that's the whole process. I really hope this video helped you give you some ideas on how to reduce waste and make your kitchen a little bit more sustainable. I want to reiterate that you don't have to do all of this at once. This is a lot of different methods and I think you should try whichever one makes most sense for your lifestyle right now and just ease into it. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do it this way. There are so many ways to reduce waste. My ways aren't the only way and there are some people who go way farther than me. Uh, and some people would do way less than me. So it's all fine. Whatever you can do, it, it makes an impact. Thanks so much for joining. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I don't know what we're doing yet, but stay tuned. We'll probably be cooking something and uh, you're great. Have a great one. Bye.